Welcome to session number five, group three, session number five. It is Friday and this is the crunch day. All right. So by now you've been through all four tutorials. Uh, you are an expert on what are OBRs. You know your Creative Commons licensing. You are able to find them. You can go out on the internet and you know how to find them. And you know how to adapt the existing ones and create new ones with the license on. And last night in the final tutorial, you found out how to share them either through EduConnect, which is the Ministry of Primary and Secondary Education's OER portal, or through OER Commons. A bit more difficult, but doable. All right. So by now, then, you have been through all of the different tutorials and you are deep in the process of creating your own OER that you can upload into the EduConnect portal. I've got one or two that I'd like to show you. People have volunteered to let us see what they've what they've done. And um, I'm going to show you these two and we can have a little look at them and have a think what is good and uh, so on. And um, also then I want to just make sure that you're very clear about the various deadlines. In fact, let's do that first. When must your OERs be up. All right. So the answer is we'll give you a little bit of an extension. The other groups had an extension. I don't see why you can't have it. So Wednesday, next week, Wednesday at five o'clock is the deadline. So please can you persevere and make sure that your assignment is up in position. If you want to get hold of the special little limited edition certificate, then uh, you will need to uh, show some evidence that you have uploaded to EduConnect. All right, so keep that in mind then. Let's just have a quick look at the, um, at the few uh, examples I've got. I'm just gonna move these out of the way so you can see. And let me get my, uh, um, uh, my few examples. The one I thought was quite cool was this one. I don't know if you can hear. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Andrea Swana from Georgia School. I'm going to demonstrate how the end is measured in a topographic map. Firstly, you identify your two points. Secondly, you put cardinal points on both points. Thirdly, you join them using a straight line. Then lastly, you measure from the reference point. The question says, Calculate the bearing of the sport height 1397-64-7000-7746-000 from your meeting 645-000-7746-000. So I'll demonstrate. It's easier when you detect a four figure bridge account from the dating figure bridge account. We did that by taking the second and third number for our estates and the ninth and the tenth for our levels. We do the same for the levels. So, I don't change the number. Our sport height 1397 is for me. This thing is for three. And then, level is for six. And then our range we find um, these things for five, and then other things for six. Any changes in the stress line? Then 
Bye, <laughs> NCSA. Look at that. All right. Um, so uh, I've forgotten who this is. Let me have a quick look. I for, uh, where is, uh, who is this? Because I really think this is an excellent first shot. This is nice. Uh, my understanding is it's Timoth Mapindani's uh, class who are putting that together. And uh, yeah, a little rough, couple of rough edges, but hey, you're in the going in the right direction. That's really, really cool. You had a nice presenter. She spoke nicely. Uh, and if, if you weren't too sure, then there were captions to follow. Um, I think we could have zoomed in a, even closer. Maybe just step in with your phone. Get right in there. Your phone can uh, actually take quite um, a small, or just a small space between it and the object. Um, but yeah, when you see it come alive like that, then you go, oh, is that what they mean? If you just read about it, then um, it's not so... Um, not so clear. Uh, Timoth, is he with us? Is he here um, in our team today? We have a look. I don't think he is. Is he? That's a shame. I was like wanting him to tell us what his process was. All right. And then I've got another one that I also quite like is this one. All right. So this is not a video. This is a, a, a lesson plan. All right. Let me just Get rid of that. Let's make it nice and big so you can see it. Um, uh, right. So this one is actually a computer studies or a, a, a computer class. Uh, it's on hardware maintenance for the little lighties, grade six. And uh, this one is about um, keyboard cleaning. Okay. So a little exp explanation of what is hardware and why maintenance is necessary. There's a little image of a uh, traditional keyboard and then what materials you will need. Okay, some alcohol, some Q-tips, a vacuum cleaner or compressed air, some lint-free cloth, a toothpick, a flat screwdriver, and then some steps. Step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, step six. And if you're not too sure, there's a link to a video. Let's see if we can get the video up. Um, and in here is the um, the little license. Uh, it's by Stambiso Chiwetwetwetwe, uh, and is Creative Commons Attribution. So very nice, cool, lekker lekker lekker. That's a nice little handy resource. So instead of a teacher having to kind of work that all out, you can just download it from EduConnect and stick it in. So let me just show you the criteria one more time. Let me just call up my folder. Right, so what are the criteria? So if you think of the three we've just seen, um, uh, adapted or created two or more new quality teaching and learning resources. So you can see some of them would get the full two, some of them would get probably a one or a or whatever. Clearly stated on each resource how it is aligned to the specific MOPSI curriculum statement, especially the, um, the lesson plan one for the keyboard maintenance. It did have all that data at the top. All right. So that would definitely get its two points. And Creative Commons license to each resource. Yeah, I think they all, they all did that. All right. So that's cool. They would get there too. And then, see, there's quite a lot of uh, marks for uploading the resource into EduConnect. And it's for some people in groups one and two, it's been extremely frustrating. All right. It's, yeah, so you just got to persevere and make sure that it happens. Um, obviously, if you get one resource up, you get two points. If you get two resources up, you can get up to four points. All right. But it's got to be in there. I've got to be able to find it. All right. If I can't find it, you can't have the points. So that is the little assignment. And then I'll just put the little bait in front of you again. So what do you get for all this? All right. So it's going to look something like this. Um, it will have your name. It will say that you have completed the module. It will say when you did it. And it will say 
and submitted openly licensed curriculum materials to the MOPSI EduConnect repository. All right, so we have to have evidence that it's in there. That's the point. Um, and then you'll have your own little code, so that's unique, and then you'll receive this digitally. Okay, we're not going to print them out. We're just going to send you them digitally. If you really want it printed out, then you can stick it, take it down to the printers. Um, all right, but we're not going to send you a paper one. We're going to give you a digital one. All right. So then that is basically um, uh, where, uh, where we're up to. The, um, very importantly, though, I need you to fill in that questionnaire. So let's just see how many of you have done it. Uh, they're, they're coming in. It's gone up from 72 to 77. Yeah, but that's not enough. I need you all to fill it in. So I see now we're up to 22 people in the Zoom room. So please, I'm going to do it again. I want you to spend a few minutes now filling it in. All right, please continue to um, fill in the survey. You can listen to me um, while you're doing it. Um, I'm just going to quickly show you the, um, the EduConnect portal. So we've been talking about it, and there were a few, a few um, videos on it in the tutorial. But I'll just quickly show you. So to make sure that you have uploaded, can you first of all uh, sign up? So if you have not done that yet, that is your first thing. So it's a bit smaller. All right. So you need to add in your first name, your last name. You have to put in your email address and uh, come up with a password and confirm that your password is what you said it was. All right. So once you've done that, then you can sign in. Okay. Let me just go back here. And then you can log in. All right. So then you put in your username and your password, and then you can sign in. You'll know that you're successful if your name appears in the top right-hand corner. Mine's even got my photo. Um, you can add that in if you want but your name will definitely appear there. All right. Now, keep in mind that EduConnect is not going to accept anything unless you have logged in. All right. It doesn't take anonymous things. It needs to know who is the person who has uploaded the resource. So then you'll see there's a button that says submit resource. All right. Here we go. And it's going, this is the metadata that I was talking to you about. All right. So, when we say metadata, don't get scared. It simply means describing words. All right. So what is the resource title? So you can say forms of water or keyboard maintenance or um, uh, finding the bearing from one point to another or whatever. Okay. Then what? who is, let me make this bigger so you can see. All right, so it's nice and big now. All right, so who is the author? So it could be yourself. You can then you can just type your name in if you are the author, or if it was a, a group, you can have more than one name there. Or you might say no. The um, uh, I'm going to actually put my institution in. You could, but um, down here under publisher, you could do that. So you could either put in your high school. Or you might say, no, the publisher in this instance is actually the national authority. So you can say it is actually Mopsy. So come up with a title, come up with an author, work out who you're going to give publishing rights to. And now it wants to know how does this fit the Zimbabwe curriculum? So you have to come in here and actually choose from one of these levels where it fits in. So I can say, all right, uh, mine is grade two. And then you'll see it populates this for me. It only shows me grade two subjects. So I can say maths and science. And then what is the topic? So I can say here it is, um, uh, you, this should actually come from your curriculum. What is the topic under which it is? So you can say energy and power, or whatever it happens to be. All right, this would help if I could spell. All right, and now um, what is it? So you can say uh, worksheet to help students identify different types of waterfalls. Solid 
um, uh, liquid liquid <laughs> liquid no you don't spell like it uh, uh liquid liquid <laughs> very embarrassing i can't spell it um which would be uh water and um gas and steam I don't know, something like that. So um, you would um, fill it in here, and then you say, what is the resource type? Now, we've asked you to create teaching and learning resources. So you choose one of those, but no, choose that one. All right. And then what is the license? But by now, you know the license because you've already put it on your resource. So just tell us which one it is. So um, can, can you make sure that they line up? They should be the same. And what is the format? So in my case, it's a worksheet. So mine's a document, all right? And then it says you can upload. And then you can drag your resource onto this thing here. So if you're on the phone, you're in for a hard time, all right? Um, this actually, the whoever designed it didn't really think about non-laptop type environments. And there should really be a go find your file thing here. But anyway, you can drag it on. So if I was down here, let me give you an example of what it's supposed to do. So, um, so here we go. So here is, I don't know if you can see, let me do it that way. All right, so then I can grab um, one of my files. So let's just go into um, anyway, documents. You want to find something? Not so easy, is it? Ah. Let me redo that. Let me just choose this one here. Uh, all right, so then you can just grab it and then you can dr drop it into there. All right, and then it should upload. Um, in. All right, then you can say close. I'm not going to because it's a load of rubbish. All right, so um, uh, then you click submit the resource. However, if it is not, um, uh, if you've uploaded it to YouTube, you know, I like to put all my stuff on YouTube, then I would actually just give the hyperlink. So then I'd go to my YouTube thing, I would right click, I would say copy the video URL, and then I'd come back here and type, paste it in here. All right. And then you say submit resource. So it can do either files or it can do hyperlink. So you can decide which one is the right one. Okay. So it's as simple as that. Um, there are all those videos in, in um, uh, tutorial number four explains how to do that. But that was just a little uh, menu. I'm not going to save it because it's a load of rubbish. Um, uh, and then you should be ready to roll. All right. So are there any questions? Uh, any queries? Any concerns? I see Abigail. Okay, you did not send the link for tutorial. So we failed to see the videos. All right, but you have the link to all of them. I guess you really you only need one link. It's this one. Remember this page because you've got all the videos, you've got your your training schedule you've got here's the four tutorials you've even got the course evaluation so all right rather than what i've just said because who's going to remember that i'm going to post this also in the group three whatsapp okay thank you all right it's gone in so there so if you for some reason weren't able to access number four yesterday then please have a look tonight all right you've got to wednesday so um, the pressure's off a little bit, but you're going to need time to build and to upload. So have a look at four. I went very quickly through it, but it does show you those steps and you can pause and replay, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Abigail, I hope that's uh, uh, solved your problem. Uh, we've also got agreement with his or her hand up. Hello, Mr. Moore. Ah, there we go. 
Yes, can hear you now. I wanted to 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 say um I had problems on connecting to your to your lessons. Right. I only managed the first day and today I am saying I only managed to go through your lessons with you today and Monday. Right. So what I need is to follow all the links which you gave us so that I can be able to to produce my resource. Yes. So have a look uh, on our page. We've got everything. It's all in one place. So you are group three. Here's our Zoom session. So if you want to watch the Zoom sessions, they're all here. You just click on like, for example, that was yesterday's. So you click on there and you can see everything we said in the session. All right. That was the fourth one. So, okay, welcome to, so we've got it all organized, uh, session one, session two, session three, session four. Uh, we've got the, the little uh, training schedule and study guide is here. And then we've got the four tutorials. So to be honest, if you just work through the four tutorials, that's the meat. Okay, Mr. Mo. All right. So you don't um, need me. I'm, I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> Everything you need is on that link. Okay. I only wanted to say one thing, that uh, after this session, we will we'll be able to get help from you directly. All right. Well, I'm on the WhatsApp. So you can talk you to get me. me some... Yeah. And you can talk to me for another two weeks. Okay. Uh, um, I see Learn More was next. Uh, no, Mr. Moore, it's not a question, but it's just a comment. Right, I was saying the Zoom meeting was so, so interesting. And the other thing that I've noticed is that the, the, I mean, the whole task is very easy. If we give ourselves time to go through the modules, I think we can make it. I've been going through from uh, the first module up to the fourth. I think it's, it's very easy. Hmm. We have to give ourselves time to go through them. You do. Yes, I well, thank you very much. We, I mean, we learned a, few, a lot of things from you, Mr. Mo. Thank you very much. Another issue is, uh, we were talking about the issue of certificates. Maybe another thing that I may ask is, uh, is there any monetary value on this, um, on this Zoom meeting or otherwise just doing it for the sake of uh, getting something? Uh, maybe <laughs> growing. Growing, yes. Becoming a better teacher. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, because I don't hesitate to ask. Some people may hesitate to ask, but I want to get to know what is taking place. Well, to be honest, um, what you are doing is you're improving as a teacher because you're beginning to use more technology. But what's happened since COVID-19 is that those teachers who have um, strong education slash technology skills are being snapped up as instructional designers all around the world. So um, suddenly now those people are in high demand. All right. So if it's a stepping stone to changing your career, to be honest, uh, you could become more of an instructional designer, a learning designer uh, along those lines there. So I would, if you persevere and you could see already, um, I forgot and the chap's name I've already who did the nice little video today you see he's on the journey he's going to have my job in a few years okay because he's experimenting he's trying to use technology to improve education uh yeah he'll be sitting here training the people who come behind you in a few years because he's got the right uh, mentality and he's going for it so learn more if you go for it then yeah this is a an avenue that you could uh, develop and grow into all right, Titch, you've had your hand right, up so for a while. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes, um, uh, Mr. Mo, uh, I wanted to ask, you said we should submit uh, two resources to you. Not to me. What platform are we using? Edu Connect to submit yeah. to you. Yeah. I don't want you to send them to me. I'm not interested. I'll lose them. I get so many mails in a day that I can't track. Uh, all of these submissions. So they have to come through EduConnect. I go onto EduConnect. I check that they're there, that they're of good quality. I mark them and then I give the certificate. So if they're not okay. on EduConnect, then I'll probably lose them. So don't send them to me. Okay. Oh, all right. Ah, that's fine. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Uh, oh, see, Lermo's got his hand up one more time. Lermo. Okay. Thank you, sir. 
what i'm trying to 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 i mean to to get to analyze from what we've been doing is is there is it not any disadvantage to those who are commercially marketing their resources because given the situation that will be just uh, coming up with our articles, maybe resources for the education system, even books and what, what. Mm-hmm. Is it not a, a disadvantage to those who are commercially doing it? All right. So that's a very good point. So if we go OERs, you realize there's no money involved. Okay. We are just sharing our quality resources with everyone and they are sharing with us. So um, if you are going to release your materials as OERs, there is no commercial benefit. You'll get lots of exposure. You'll become well known for quality uh, design and for quality resources. And maybe one day that might translate into a different career, but there's no money in OERs. However, you might say, all right, um, my early stuff are releases OERs, but as I get better and better and better, then I'm going to uh, put them fully copyrighted and I'm going to look for a publisher. All right. And then that way you might uh, no, that, be able to create some income from it. Okay. So keep that in mind. Uh, no, no, Mr. Moore. I, I think you did not get me well. Okay. <laughs> I'm saying for those who have been doing it commercial, I'm not talking about us, but those who have been doing it, maybe like coming up with resources and then commercially trading them on the market. Are we not suppressing their talents, their innovation skills uh, by just, I mean, coming up with something which is for free? Because according to our Creative Commons license, it seems as if we are just doing that for free. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying those who are already in that business, not doing for free, doing for, for, for money, for commercially, are we not suppressing their skills? Mm. Okay, good question. Um, yes, you are. So that means they can't just produce rubbish. They've got to produce something <laughs> that's even better than we can. All right. So we are just teachers and we are tr- teaching and we are making resources, etc. These people sit there all day making quality resources. So if they are useless, if they are rubbish, then they're going to lose their job because we will just we will overtake them. So they need to move to the next level. They're going to make it really, really professional, really exciting, really engaging, really attractive. They can't just sit there and say, oh, because it's now digital, it is good. No, rubbish. Every teacher can create digital resources. So what are they bringing to the party to make things better? All right. So I think we are providing competition. We're not suppressing them. We are forcing them to go to the next level. All right. So we we don't have time to um, put a whole production thing together. We just have to do it uh, in between our lesson planning and et cetera. But they do have time. So they mustn't produce rubbish now. They must produce quality. Okay. That's fine. Thank you very much. (laughs) Uh, Wilton, your hand is up. You're mute. Sorry, uh, Wilton, you're mute. Can you unmute yourself first? Sorry. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Uh, my question is mainly directed to now that we have learned these skills on how to create our, our own content. Now, maybe given our situation, then I've already created, or else I've created uh, the, the content in the future. Then both the, 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 we have done this um, now because we have data. Um, I understand how will I be able maybe to upload them, maybe given the decision, we don't have, we have no data. In that case, how would I do that? Um, all right. No, you do need data. All right. So that's why UNESCO um, um, subsidized you for the training. Um, uh, in the future, though, um, you'll have to find another source in order to upload additional resources. So um, that's why we waited a whole week to make sure that you did have your data in order to do the training. Um, hopefully in time, when things come right, then the cost of data will come down and then it's more likely um, that these skills, uh, that you'll have more opportunity to try out these skills. If you look around the world, the trend is that data is getting cheaper, but I know Zimbabwe is kind of a special case. Um, uh, When I was there last time, uh, data was getting more expensive by the day uh, rather than 
um, rather than slowly coming down. In South Africa, we're all crying because we think our data is too expensive as well. There's kind of a monopoly here and um, they're, killing, they're killing us. Um, but the world trend is that connectivity is getting faster and cheaper as the years go by. So I'm hoping Zim comes right. Sorry about that. That's the reality. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Moore. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Andrew, Andrew Antonio. Hello. How are you, Mr. Oh, Moore? It's going well. Good. My question is on the, the way we are sharing these resources. We are teachers sharing these resources so that we use them with our learners or amongst ourselves to teach in our classrooms. But then, is it not necessary that our learners get also the chance to access these resources by themselves so that for those who can manage, they can go through the resources so that they can learn even by themselves so that by the time we get to the certain topic, they will be already ahead of us so that it makes our learning even easier now that the learners will be having the resources. That's, that's a good observation. Um, uh, we have obviously organized the training to talk to teachers. Um, you're all teachers. Uh, I was a teacher for many years. Um, so the um, we've kind of uh, phrased everything as if it's the teacher's domain, but it, you, you're quite right. It's also a domain for the students. Um, and um, uh we should encourage the students to also go and have a look for OBRs. And so, for example, if you create a project and you want them to put together a PowerPoint with all the all their results and so on, then we should, you know, we could say things like, or make sure that you use OERs uh, when, when you're choosing your picture. Do your image Google search, make sure you're not choosing copyrighted stuff. Um, uh, go look for these, uh, a start, start a pack and then a, adapt it for the project, etc. So these are skills that they, they that they should um, as well. All right. So I fully agree with you, Andrew. I think um, we shouldn't see it as only the domain of teachers. It's also the domain of students. Thank you. Okay. Any other queries, questions, observations, statements? Right. Uh, that brings us to the end of session five. I will put up the recording as soon as it's available. Uh, so, for example, someone phoned in today and said that they've only were able to get numbers one and five. Um, so if you go to the uh, website, you can access all the recordings, all five of them for group three. All right. So thank you very much and good afternoon. I'll see you on the WhatsApp. You are free to go.